Welcome, dear listeners, to another bone-chilling episode of Our Scary Stories. I am your guide through the unsettling corridors of your imagination, here to take you on a journey where your deepest fears take form. Tonight, we delve into the eerie aftermath of an alien invasion, where grief-stricken survivors face off against the hollow echoes of their deceased loved ones. Prepare yourselves for the shadows of the hollow ones. Now, dim the lights, pull your blanket a little tighter, and listen closely. The story is about to begin. A world Emma knew was now an ashen tableau of despair. Buildings, once thriving with human activity, stood like broken skeletons against the bleached sky. The alien invaders had left little untouched. Only the wind, it seemed, still whispered of the life that once thrived in these ruins. Emma, with her face hardened by determination and loss, looked out at the wreckage, her every sense assaulted by the stark emptiness. A musty odor hung in the air, the earth's mournful perfume of charred concrete and scorched soil. It tasted bitter on her tongue, gritty residue of destruction lingering in the hollows of her cheeks. Silence clung to the ruins, a shroud thicker than the dust that layered everything. Only the occasional, faint creaks of decaying structures punctuated the quietude. She ran her fingers along a scorched wall, flakes of plaster coming off beneath her touch, a chilling reminder of the world that used to be. In this desolate landscape, Emma was an ember. She roved the ruins, scavenging what little she could find, the rasp of her own breath her constant companion. Her heart ached with loss, but beat strongly, resiliently, a silent defiance against the invaders. Yet, in the midst of this isolation, something improbable happened. As she returned to her makeshift shelter, nestled within a crumbled bookstore, she saw a figure standing in the gray light of the failing dusk. A figure that should have been impossible. The silhouette bore a haunting familiarity, and as Emma squinted against the dim light, her heart lodged in her throat. Anna, she whispered into the twilight. Before her stood her sister, untouched by the passage of years or the cruelty of death. Anna's once vibrant blue eyes were now reflective, almost silvery, gleaming in the dusky light. Her face bore an unnerving tranquility, as if she was a ghost caught in an endless dream. Emma's breath hitched. Her sister, the one she'd lost long before the invasion, was here. Their reunion was a tableau of surreal warmth amidst the cold ruins. Emma's every instinct screamed at her that this was wrong, impossible, but the palpable form of her sister, the soft timbre of her voice, silenced her doubts. The familiar yet strange sight of Anna chipped away at Emma's resolve. Anna's voice, eerily serene yet unmistakably hers, filled the silence of their destroyed world. Emma felt a rush of relief, guilt, and a thousand unspoken emotions nodding in her chest. For now, she chose to cling to this miraculous return even as the night descended and cloaked their desolate world in darkness. As she held her resurrected sister close, an eerie stillness embraced the ruins. Emma could hear her heartbeat pounding against the deafening silence, feeding her hopes, fears, and the guilt she bore for a death that, it seemed, was never real. As her senses drowned in this uncanny reunion, she couldn't shake off a lingering dread, a sinister whisper in the backdrop of her joy. But in the bleak silence of the destroyed world, the returned warmth of her lost sister was a deception Emma was willing to embrace. For now, that is. Emma spent the next few days in a haze of disbelief and joy. The cozy nest they carved out in the remains of the bookstore became their sanctuary. Shelves of forgotten lore still clung to the fringes, their pages curled and browned, as if echoing the despair of a world forever altered. Despite the unsettling calm that Anna carried, her presence in the bookstore shelter brought with it a semblance of the normalcy they once knew. Each day, Anna would sit by the window of their makeshift shelter, her gaze unblinking as it drank in the world outside. The silver in her eyes reflected the somber grays of the devastation, a mirror to the stark reality. Emma, on the other hand, found herself fervently observing Anna. Anna's voice, when she spoke, flowed with the lulling rhythm of a tranquil brook, a striking contrast to their grim surroundings. She moved with a grace that belied the chaos of their world. Yet, she carried an unfamiliarity, an unsettling disconnect that grew more evident with each passing day. Sometimes, Emma would mention a shared memory, their childhood squabbles, that disastrous camping trip, the taste of their mom's apple pie, and Anna would simply tilt her head, a distant look glazing over her eyes. It was as if she were a visitor in her own past, hearing the stories, but failing to truly remember. As these moments accumulated, a whisper of doubt began to gnaw at Emma's initial elation. Anna was here, but parts of her were oddly missing. 
Despite these troubling signs, Emma's longing for her sister overpowered her growing doubts. She felt a gnawing guilt at her suspicions, a guilt amplified by the stark reality that Anna was alive when she was supposed to be gone forever. The evenings they spent huddled together, sharing stories under the cold, silver glow of the alien-influenced moon, painted a surreal picture of familial warmth amidst global despair. The cold seeped into their bones, penetrating the threadbare blanket they shared. Yet, the shivering cold felt oddly comforting, as if asserting that they were still alive, still human. Emma would often find herself lost in the rhythmic cadence of Anna's breathing, a lullaby that lulled her into restless sleep in the heart of a ruined world. She was not alone anymore. Her sister was with her, a beacon of familiarity amidst the alien and the unknown. It was a reality she desperately clung to, even as unease nibbled at the edges of her joy. Every dawn brought with it a renewed sense of hope, despite the lingering shadows of uncertainty. Emma's mind wrestled with the conflicting emotions, but her heart clung fiercely to the presence of her sister, silencing her logical apprehensions. Anna was here, alive and breathing, and for Emma, that was a miracle she was not ready to question. Not yet, anyway. As the days stretched into weeks, the bleak world outside their shelter remained unchanged. However, within the walls of their sanctuary, a subtle shift transpired. With Anna's returned presence, a semblance of routine took root amidst the rubble. Every morning, Emma would wake to find Anna seated at the broken window, staring unblinkingly at the skeletal remains of their city. Her silver eyes, unmoving and unemotional, would reflect the desolation, imbuing the air with a sense of uncanny calm. The siblings scavenged the ruins during the day. The remnants of what used to be their neighborhood were a grim playground. They dodge shattered glass, climb over skeletal structures, and navigate the maze of despair that was once teeming with life. Anna followed Emma quietly, her movements too graceful for the devastation around them. Emma would point out remnants of their old world, the scorched playground they used to frequent, the fragment of the mural on the school wall, the remains of their favorite bakery, and each time, Anna would offer her the same distant, vacant smile. The stories held no life for her, evoking no nostalgia, no sadness, no joy. Only a quiet acceptance, devoid of emotional ties. Nights were particularly challenging. The alien moon cast long, nightmarish shadows across the ruin-laden landscape, and a chilling wind often howled through the cracks of their makeshift home. Emma would huddle close to Anna, seeking warmth, but her sister's body, though solid, was always oddly cold, like a statue under the winter sky. With every passing day, Emma's heart wrestled with the joy of having her sister back and the growing fear that the person beside her was not truly Anna. Sometimes, she would catch Anna staring at her, an unrecognizable glint in her silvery eyes. Other times, Anna would stand amidst the ruins, her figure eerily blending with the devastation as though she were an extension of it. Emma attempted to quell her fears, to convince herself that Anna's peculiar behavior was the result of her miraculous return. The guilt for harboring such suspicions gnawed at her, intensifying the emotional tumult within her. But there was an undeniable truth that Emma was beginning to confront. The sister she remembered was fading, replaced by this hollow echo. The vibrant Anna, brimming with life and laughter, felt lost in this emotionless doppelganger. Doubt, like a creeping shadow, began to darken Emma's relief of having her sister back. Yet, she clung fiercely to her resurrected family, unwilling to voice her growing fears. She resolved to bury her suspicions, to hope against hope that the sister she loved would return from behind those silvery, distant eyes. But even as she made this promise to herself, Emma knew that things were beginning to unravel, and it was only a matter of time before she had to confront the chilling reality. The illusion of normalcy was thinning, about to shatter, and Emma was not sure if she was ready to face what lay beneath. One sweltering afternoon, Emma decided to venture farther than they usually did. The oppressive heat had driven away the typically relentless wind, leaving the air as still and lifeless as the city around them. Anna silently followed Emma through the ruins, her pale figure striking against the charred, skeletal remains of their neighborhood. They traversed past crumbled houses and derelict buildings, their journey painting a stark picture of the alien-inflicted desolation. Eventually, they arrived at what used to be the bustling heart of their city. The towering remnants of the city center loomed over them, casting long, monstrous shadows that stretched out across the barren landscape. Once a bustling hub of human life, 
The city center now lay in ruins, a silent testament to the power of the alien invaders. As they approached the ruins, Emma noticed a figure moving in the distance, obscured by the cloud of dust and debris that the city had become. Emma's heart pounded in her chest as they approached the figure. She was not sure what to expect. The world was not the same anymore. The figure came into view, revealing a middle-aged man with a thick beard and deeply etched lines of hardship on his face. His clothes were tattered and his posture was hunched, as though he carried the weight of the world on his shoulders. He seemed as much a part of the ruins as the crumbled structures around him. His name was Robert, a survivor just like them. He spoke in a rough, gravelly voice, a stark contrast to the desolation that surrounded them. As he recounted his story of survival, Emma couldn't help but notice the way he'd occasionally glance at Anna with a puzzled expression. Your sister, he began hesitantly, pointing at Anna. She looks just like, just like Mary. Mary, Emma queried, her heart pounding with a sudden unease. Robert proceeded to describe Mary, his deceased daughter, who had inexplicably returned to him weeks ago, behaving oddly, eerily similar to Anna. Emma felt a shiver run down her spine. Robert's Mary, much like Anna, carried the same reflective silver eyes and the same emotional emptiness. Their conversation was interrupted when Anna moved away suddenly, her figure merging with the ruins. A sudden chill washed over Emma, her mind swirling with doubt and confusion. Robert's account was a disturbing echo of her own experience, a haunting confirmation of her suspicions. In the cold reality of the ruined city center, amidst shadows of their past lives and haunted by the echoes of Robert's words, Emma's world was beginning to crumble. The veil of deception was gradually lifting, revealing a sinister truth she was not ready to accept. Her sister's peculiar behavior, the unsettling calm, the silvery eyes, they were not mere quirks of her miraculous return. They were signs, signs of a terrifying reality that was gradually unfolding. Emma found herself at the precipice of an unsettling revelation, trapped between the overwhelming desire to deny this chilling truth and the growing evidence that suggested otherwise. The illusion of having her sister back was shattering, bit by agonizing bit, leaving Emma in the cold embrace of a horrifying realization. In the weeks that followed, Emma found herself haunted by Robert's words. She would lay awake at night, staring at the figure of her sister in the dim, alien moonlight. Anna's presence, which used to be her solace, now loomed as an eerie reminder of the dread creeping into her heart. Eva started observing Anna more keenly, looking for the slightest signs that could confirm or refute the unnerving connection between Anna and Robert's Mary. Her heart ached as she longed for her real sister, the one filled with warmth, laughter, and life, not this uncanny replica. One day, while rummaging through the debris of their old neighborhood, Emma stumbled upon a tattered photograph from their childhood. She was taken aback by the stark difference between the Anna in the photo, her eyes sparkling with life and laughter, and the Anna she now knew with her cold, silvery gaze. The chilling dichotomy was a harsh reminder of the sister she had lost. Emma decided to confront Anna, the fear of losing her sister again wrestling with the need to expose the truth. Holding the torn photograph, she locked eyes with Anna. Do you remember this day, Anna? Emma asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Anna glanced at the picture, her gaze lingering over the images of their younger selves, yet her face remained as impassive as ever. She nodded, her voice eerily calm. Yes, we were at the park. We had ice cream. You dropped yours and cried. Emma shuddered. It was a perfect recounting, but devoid of any emotion. A memory, instead of evoking shared joy, fell flat, like a story read from a script. Anna, Emma began, her voice shaky. Do you feel anything? Any emotion? Anna looked at her, her silvery eyes as calm and distant as ever. I understand your emotions, Emma. But I, I do not feel them. A chilling silence fell over them. Emma's worst fears had been confirmed. The alien invaders had somehow manipulated their grief, resurrecting their deceased loved ones as emotionless vessels. Emma felt a wave of despair wash over her. Her sister, the real Anna, was truly gone. In the deafening silence of their destroyed world, Emma wept for her lost sister, the tears staining the faded photograph. She was not alone in her sorrow, the ruins around her seemed to echo her grief, a bleak symphony of despair. The realization of her sister's transformation stunned more bitterly than the initial loss. The uncanny mirage of Anna was a constant reminder of what she had lost. 
The veil of deception had finally lifted, revealing a reality far more horrifying than she could have ever imagined. Haunted by the confirmation of her worst fears, Emma wrestled with a profound sense of loss and a grim resolve. The chilling knowledge that Anna was an alien simulacrum turned her world upside down, a painful deception crafted out of her deepest longing. However, she found a grim determination stirring within her. Emma decided to seek out other survivors, like Robert, those who had encountered their hollow loved ones. She hoped to expose the aliens' chilling scheme and find a way to sever the painful, deceptive connection that the aliens had established using their grief. Over the following days, Emma, accompanied by Anna, navigated through the decimated landscape to track down other survivors. Their journey was fraught with grim reminders of their lost world, yet with each survivor they found, Emma's resolve hardened. In the ruins of a library, they found Lydia, an old woman whose son had returned to her, just as emotionless as Anna. In the shell of a fire station, they discovered Benjamin, a former firefighter who was haunted by his hollow wife. Their stories mirrored Emma's, each survivor trapped in the tormenting cycle of hope, loss, and betrayal. Despite their chilling circumstances, there was a sense of unity and shared understanding among the group, a collective strength fueled by their shared heartache and a common enemy. They gathered each day to discuss their experiences, their faces lit by the cold, alien moonlight, their voices whispering stories of loss and survival amidst the ruins. However, their meetings were not without tension. Emma noticed that the Hollow Ones, including Anna, often stood apart, their silvery eyes reflecting the desolation around them. Their presence, a chilling reminder of the alien invasion, cast an eerie pall over the group. One particular night, while the group was huddled around a makeshift fire, a sudden realization gripped Emma. The aliens had used their most profound grief as a weapon, but in doing so, they had inadvertently united the survivors. It was their shared loss, their collective heartache, that now bound them together, fueling their determination to resist and reveal the aliens' ploy. As the ruins of their world loomed over them, and the alien moon cast its pale light, Emma looked around at her newfound family. She felt a surge of hope amidst the despair. She was not alone in her battle. The pain that the Hollow Ones had brought them was real, but so was their will to fight back. And fight back, they would. With their group steadily growing, Emma felt a spark of hope. Each new member shared their story, adding another piece to the puzzle. Yet, understanding the aliens' intentions and finding a way to counter them remained elusive. Their routine meetings often carried into the night. Huddled around makeshift fires, they would share fragments of their lives before the invasion, their hollow loved ones looming at the edges of their circle, a constant reminder of their shared despair. One day, Emma decided to confront the hollow ones directly. The decision came with a strange mix of dread and desperation, but it was a step she felt they had to take. In a gathering marked by tense silence, Emma stood before Anna and the other hollow ones, their silvery eyes reflecting the cold firelight. Her heart pounded in her chest as she mustered the courage to voice the question that had been gnawing at them all. Why are you here? What do the aliens want? Emma asked, her voice steady despite the storm of emotions within her. Anna's gaze met Emma's, her face as impassive as ever. We are here because you wanted us. Your grief, your longing, it called to us. We are your wish made flesh, she replied, her voice chillingly serene. The raw truth of Anna's words struck Emma like a punch. Their deepest grief had been manipulated, turned into a twisted reality that kept them trapped in a cycle of false hope and despair. But Emma wasn't ready to back down. And if we no longer want you here, if we let you go, the Hollow Ones exchanged glances, their silver eyes flickering with a strange light. It was the first sign of any emotional response from them. Anna turned back to Emma, her voice carrying a note of uncertainty. We, we don't know. No one has tried. That night, under the spectral blow of the alien moon, a new resolve took root within the group. They were victims of an emotional manipulation so profound it had reshaped their reality. But it also gave them the key to their freedom, acceptance. If their grief had drawn the Hollow Ones into existence, then accepting their loss could release them. It was a daunting realization, one that required them to confront their deepest sorrow, but it was a chance they were willing to take. As the desolate cityscape stretched out around them, a newfound determination bonded the group. They were not just survivors anymore, they were fighters. The battle they were about to undertake was not against an external invader, but against their own hearts, a war of acceptance. They knew the road ahead would be painful, but they also knew they had each other. 
and together they were much, much stronger. The following days were marked by an intensity that stood in stark contrast to the lifeless world around them. Each survivor confronted their hollow loved one, wrestling with the rawness of their grief, unearthing memories they had suppressed, and facing their profound sorrow head-on. Emma grappled with her emotions in front of Anna. She spoke of their shared childhood, their dreams, and the life they had once lived. Tears streamed down her face as she recounted the day Anna had died, the emptiness it had left in her heart, and the desperate longing that had echoed in her every waking moment since. Her words were a cathartic release, as if she was draining the wound that had festered within her. It was a painful, harrowing process, but also a necessary one. And as she spoke, she felt Anna's gaze on her, the usual vacant stare replaced with an inexplicable depth. One by one, each survivor had their confrontation. Lydia spoke to her son, her voice trembled with unshed tears as she accepted her loss. Benjamin faced his hollow wife, his voice thick with raw emotion as he bade her farewell. Each confrontation was a heart-wrenching display of courage, an open battle against their grief. The hollow ones listened, their silvery eyes seemingly reflecting the survivors' turmoil. They stood like specters at the edge of their pain, bearing silent witness to the survivors' struggle, their existences linked to the raw emotions being exposed. Days turned into weeks, and slowly, the survivors began to see changes. The hollow ones seemed to lose some of their rigidity, their reflections of their loved ones becoming less perfect, less solid. They flickered like an image on a screen with a weak signal, a sign that the emotional ties were weakening. Emboldened by these subtle changes, the survivors pushed forward, pouring out their grief, their acceptance, their goodbyes. They dug deep into their pain, exposing it to the alien moonlight, and found within themselves the strength to let go. With each passing day, the Hollow Ones flickered more, their forms becoming increasingly unstable. It was as if the act of acceptance was severing the emotional chains that held them in place, gradually freeing the survivors from their painful deception. In their shared struggle, the survivors found not only the courage to face their deepest grief, but also a unity that fortified them against their alien invaders. Their battle was far from over, but for the first time since the invasion, they dared to hope. They dared to believe that they could reclaim their world from the grip of the Hollow Ones. With the progression of time, the survivors' painful confessions and acceptance began to take effect. The Hollow Ones were unstable, their forms flickering, like images from a dying projector. It was as if the emotional ties that had kept them in existence were unraveling. Anna's form flickered the most, her appearance becoming increasingly ethereal. The sight filled Emma with a mix of relief and an unexpected pang of loss. Saying goodbye was harder than she had anticipated, but she knew it was necessary. One day, beneath the cold alien moonlight, Emma sat beside Anna for what she felt might be their last conversation. She took a deep breath, holding the tattered photo of them as children. Anna, do you remember what you told me when we took this photo? Emma asked, her voice steady. Anna's form flickered, but she nodded. I told you that we'd always be together, no matter what. Emma's throat tightened, tears welled up in her eyes. And you were right, Anna. You were with me, even after you were gone. But I have to let you go now. I, I accept that you're gone, and I will miss you, always. As Emma confessed, Anna's image flickered rapidly, becoming more translucent. The air between them seemed to pulse with a strange energy, the echo of their shared past. Anna looked at Emma, her silvery eyes reflecting the moonlight. Goodbye, Emma, Anna said, her voice fading like a distant echo. And just like that, she was gone, her form dissolving into thin air, leaving behind an empty space that echoed with her absence. Emma wept, her heart aching with the finality of her loss. Across the ruined city, a similar scene played out. The survivors said their final goodbyes, their voices filled with acceptance and love. One by one, the Hollow Ones faded away, their existence tied to the grief that had now been laid to rest. In the eerie silence that followed, the survivors found themselves truly alone in the desolate cityscape. But they were not defeated, they were free from the torment of the Hollow Ones. The alien invasion had been a nightmare that manipulated their deepest sorrows, but it had also united them, made them face their grief, and through it, they found strength. In the emptiness that was left behind, they found the courage to rebuild, to forge a new path in their changed world. They had faced their deepest fear and had come out stronger. The pain of their losses would always be a part of them, a scar on their hearts, but they were ready to move forward. 
The alien moon still shone down on them, a constant reminder of their invasion. But beneath it, a group of survivors stood united, their spirits unbroken. The battle was won not with guns or violence, but with acceptance and courage. The echo of their goodbyes still lingered in the air, a testament to their strength. And for the first time in a long while, they felt hope. They were ready for whatever came next, because they knew that whatever the future held, they would face it together. In the aftermath of the Hollow One's dissolution, the survivors found themselves in a world free of the aliens' emotional manipulation. The night that once harbored their silent nightmares now felt oddly peaceful, the alien moon no longer a symbol of their torment, but a reminder of their triumph. They began to reclaim their city, their hands working together to clear away the physical remnants of the invasion. The task was daunting, but they found a rhythm in their shared labor, a quiet solidarity that echoed their victory. Emma found herself at the heart of this reconstruction. Her bravery in facing her hollow sister, her strength in uniting the survivors, had unwittingly made her a leader. She guided the survivors, not with orders, but with a shared understanding of their grief and their newfound hope. They discovered that the absence of the hollow ones had another unexpected effect. The alien forces that had silently watched their emotional exploitation had begun to retreat. The eerie craft that had hovered, untouchable, in their skies started to disappear, leaving behind only the altered moon as a remnant of their presence. And so, dear listeners, we reach the end of our chilling journey tonight. The echoes of the Hollow Ones may have quieted, but their shadows linger, a testament to the survivors' courage and resilience. I hope this tale of sorrow, acceptance, and triumph has left you with a chill in your spine, and a thought in your mind. Remember, even in the face of our deepest fears, the human spirit can triumph. Join us again next time on our scary stories for another spine-tingling adventure. Until then, keep your eyes open, your headphones on, and always remember, fear is only as real as your mind allows it to be. Good night, listeners, and pleasant dreams. This is our scary stories signing off for tonight.